she was living independently and uh, she had a car, she used to go out, she was a very sociable lady. She travelled uh, to Australia, she went to Mexico, she went to Belize, Guatemala, she played bowls, she worked on the canal as a volunteer. She was just a very busy lady, enjoyed socialising, um, enjoyed her grandchildren. She had a party in the June uh, with all her friends to celebrate her birthday. And then the fall happened in July, August time. The falls will never go away and we will never get the falls rate in hospital down to zero. But what we are striving to achieve is preventing the harm that occurs to patients. The purpose is to try and reduce the falls with harm. So that's falls where patients end up with fractures as a result or indeed some sort of head injury. She was admitted to hospital and then on the second night that she was in, we got a phone call, we'd just got home. We told that she'd just fallen out of bed and um, she'd broken her clavicle and they thought her hip. My sister and I are both nurses, so we know the impact that that could have um, on her. But, you know, we thought, well, you know, she'll have the surgery and then a bit of recuperation and then hopefully go back home. Fall safe is really important because it helps us to keep our patients safe, it decreases workload for the staff and it, it's a very simple easy way of working. The 10 steps to fall safe we use in the trust to help break down the elements of fall safe for the staff to be able to implement on an easy basis. So using either one at a time or a collective two or three to implement on their ward. She had very bad post-op um, confusion and delirium. So she stayed in hospital for um, at least four weeks and then it was decided we, that she wasn't perhaps safe to go home at that point so we suggested perhaps a convalescence home for a couple of weeks just to give her a bit of time and then go back to her flat. Every adult inpatient who comes into the OUH Trust we would risk assess for falls, develop a specific care plan for that particular patient and look to see which equipment would be best suited for that individual. People don't always realise that a lot of what they do in terms of full prevention is full safe and it is all included as part of full safe. So simple things like giving patients call bells which are accessible at the beds, making sure that people have got safe footwear on their feet, whether that be their own footwear or whether it be the double-sided grip socks that we supply in the trust now for patients. Medication is very important in falls and at least a quarter and possibly a half of all falls are due to medication. And this is one of two things, usually. Either the medications are causing sedation and the patient's balance is impaired as a result of having their senses dulled, or more commonly, it's causing orthostatic hypotension or postural hypotension, so their blood pressure drops when they stand up. As soon as a patient uh, is admitted to the ward, it's really important to do all the risk assessments um, because the likelihood of somebody being agitated, ill, wanting to get out of bed will happen very soon after they arrive. It's about putting patients in the right place too. So somewhere where they can be observed from the nurse's desk or that there's a bay watch um, arrangement so that there's somebody in that bay. I think the ways to overcome the issues with following the fall safe bundle is by educating the junior members of staff to ensure that they are competent and confident to follow the fall safe bundle. It's a clear structure, it's a clear guideline, uh, it is evidence-based so it guides you through uh, to what you need to do uh, to reduce the impact of that fall to that patient. Most of the patients which we, who we get in um, uh, acute hospital, especially in medicine, are uh, having dementia or they're confused and sometimes they forget to use the call bell and if they need a toilet or if they need a glass of water, they tend to stand up and if we don't adhere to fall safe bundle, they, they are going to fall and they are going to have harm from that fall. Mum didn't ever go home. After that, um, she went to the convalescence home and um, she lasted one night there and they called my sister. I was away on holiday. They called my sister and said that they couldn't cope. She was very muddled. She was walking around at night. So her confusion continued. Her, she wasn't safe to go home. She then got more and more muddled. She was then assessed and um, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's from that. Um, and yeah, she's still, we're now uh, just over a year on and we've sold her flat. She doesn't have a car anymore and she's in a care home and she won't go home now.
Implementing full safe, it should be everybody's business. Everybody should be included. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. Um, if you see somebody who's struggling down the corridor, you should be prepared to help them. If somebody's visiting your ward, you should be there to help them. If it's a patient or a colleague on your ward and an incident occurs, we should all be there to help them. The more eyes and ears we have looking for those potential at-risk patients, the better. I think that this is a role for everyone who works on the ward, not just the doctors and the nurses, obviously the therapists, the OTs and the physios, but there's a great contribution from the domestic staff, the cleaning staff, the porters who come on and off the ward. Uh, very often they'll be walking across the ward and there's a patient getting up in the corner and their response shouldn't be to go and get the nurse, but actually to go and see that the patient's all right before they fall over. As physios and OTs, we work with the patients at the time of the fracture or the time of the injury and right through until full recovery. Basically, we all have a role to play in prevention of falls in hospital. And if we're vigilant and we're aware and we take action, then we will all contribute to reducing the number of falls. We need to prevent harm um, and through doing these processes, which includes a proper risk assessment in a timely way, implementing measures whereby patients are safeguarded from their um, falling or from any harm, really will make a difference to their stay. A for them and their quality of care and also for the staff in terms of managing them. It's huge guilt that she's in a care home. You do question whether you're doing the right thing. She seems very settled, so I think that's all that we can hope now is that she's settled. She still knows who we all are at the moment, so that's really nice. And um, yeah, that's probably the best we can hope for is that she's relatively happy and and settled. If you take anything, take on board the impact it can have on that individual and the rest of the family. It's so important to do those assessments on them and if there are risks at all then act on them and it's very easy to do the risk assessment and perhaps we don't always follow it through. Just remember and um, put the patient first.